Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Come and get cozy as I share with you some absolutely terrifying encounters. I post new videos every day, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified when new daily content arrives on my channel. All right, let's get right into it. My girlfriend, her father, and I were parked on the bank of the Chattahoochee River. My girlfriend's father was sitting on the hood of the car with his fishing pole in front of him. He was night catfishing. While we sat there with the car lights shining across the river, my girlfriend and I were sitting in the front seat just making small talk. Honest. When all of a sudden, I heard the most horribly incredible scream coming from my right side. To set the scene, our car was parked about two feet from the water on the bank. Off my right, about 60 feet, was where the foliage began. It was very swampy, very thick, and very hard to walk through. About 40 feet further up the bank, which can't be seen from our car because of the foliage, is a huge oak tree. I'd have guessed that the tree had about a 15-foot circumference. It was massive. About 10 feet up the tree is a huge branch that went about 20 feet out over the river. My friends and I would climb that tree and jump and dive into the river at least once every couple of weeks or so. During one occasion, there were about nine of us standing on this branch attempting to make it move. We barely made it do anything, let alone shake. Anyway, back to the car. As I heard the scream, my body instantly went into what I think was shock. As I turned to my right, slowly, with all my hair standing straight up, we heard the next sound. A choo 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 my feeble attempt to describe the sound of that huge branch. I mentioned earlier that was shaking due to something gigantic jumping off of it and into the water. The splash that came next was equally as horrific. All we did was just sit there in shock, waiting. I don't know why. Staring at this point, straight ahead at the water. My guess is that we were waiting for the thing to float into our headlights. We waited and waited and waited, and all of a sudden, an object, a black, long, I would guess at least 9 to 10 feet, floated into our headlights and stopped. Please keep in mind, this action was deliberate, because it was floating downstream. We stared at it forever, it seemed, until it opened its eyes. Two huge balls of red, reflecting off the headlights of our car, I imagine, light, and looked right at us. My girlfriend's father at this point put the car into reverse and we sped off, extremely terrified. On to the next story. This happened near York in Sumter County in Alabama. I was a 13-year-old deer hunter. It was probably one of the first times that I was ever allowed to sit in a tree stand by myself. I had been in a tree stand approximately two miles from my father and brother and about one and a half miles from our cabin. The man who owned the property had told me to wait until dark and follow the dirt road right back to the cabin. I hadn't seen any deer all day, so at nightfall I unloaded my rifle and started to walk back. After I had walked about 150 yards from the green field, I heard something move in the woods. I thought to myself that now was a fine time for the deer to come back into the field. As I walked, I noticed that the sound seemed to be following me. I took my spotlight and shined it in the trees, but couldn't see anything. This didn't surprise me since I was deep in the Alabama woods. After a little longer, I caught a strong odor, and the steps seemed to be moving faster. I walked faster, so did the sound. All of a sudden, I felt this thing close in. I shined my flashlight, and something seemed to snort and jump across the road in front of me and run through the woods on the other side. I dropped my flashlight and tried to fire my rifle. In my panicked young mind, I'd forgotten that I had unloaded it. When I realized my mistake, I turned and ran all the way to the cabin. Only when I got back did I remember that I had left my flashlight in the middle of the road. Luckily, my dad had killed a deer, so I had time to calm down before he got back to the cabin. I told him I had dropped my light, and the next day we went to get it, and it was gone. I didn't tell him what really had happened. As I got older and learned the sounds of the wood, I came to realize 
that what I had heard on that November night was not walking on four legs. Rather, it was on two. I have never spoken of that event until this year. I told my wife about it after 14 years of marriage. As I told her about it, I got chills, much the same as I am experiencing as I am writing this. Since that time, I have killed many, many deer. But I have never gone in the woods until daylight and have never stayed till dark again. I was alone on the road. It was dark, but I could smell it. I thought at first it smelled like a deer. As it closed in, it sounded like a freight train snorting at me. It was more of a dark shape jumping or maybe stepping quickly in front of me. It definitely had a human shape, but it was huge. I only saw it for a quick second in front of me, maybe five to ten feet. The thing looked like a dark human shape and it passed right in front of me. Then I could hear it moving away from me in the woods and I took off the other way. There was a moon out. But if you've ever been on an Alabama dirt road at night, you know that all you could do was see it. It snorted and grunted as it went by me. It wasn't making human sound. Now, I will tell you that I'm not a scary person. I'm a bodybuilder. I played college football and am still considered somewhat of a celebrity in my hometown. The reason I want my name withheld. I have thought about this night every time I've gone into the woods to camp or hunt. I work on the weekend as a bouncer in a huge Latin nightclub. I have a professional job throughout the week. I had no intention of ever telling my story to anyone. One Saturday night, about a month ago, I'd gotten off work at the club and had gotten home at about 4 a.m. On the way home, I always listened to Coast to Coast. Art Bell was on tonight and they were talking about sightings and the such. They had a guest on who had recordings of what he called the sounds of Bigfoot. The sounds scared the crap out of me and brought back all of these emotions. This particular morning, I was getting some food from my fridge. My wife never wakes up when I get home. On this particular morning, she did. I was just closing the door when she said, hello, kind of quiet like. I jumped and it scared me so bad that I dropped my eggs, milk, everything and I yelled. When I turned around, she thought I was having a heart attack. I fell to the floor and was as white as a ghost. She came to me, and I was breathing irregularly. When I finally calmed down, she coaxed out of me what was wrong. I told her the whole story, and swore her to secrecy. On to the next story. My girlfriend and I were driving back from our senior prom from Georgia on the Chattahoochee River border area. Our high school was 37 miles downriver, way out on the boondocks. Anyway, as we were driving back home, we came to a flat two-mile section of road that had a slippery when wet sign. Because we were tired, sober, with road hypnosis, the sign reflection caught our attention, she told me after. As we came closer to the sign, something moved or reflected as we came closer, getting our attention. About a hundred feet away, with our car lights fully shining on it, we saw this massive black creature leaning on the sign. The top of the sign, I guess to be about 10 feet. Whatever this creature was, all we could see was the top of the chest and down, about 10 feet of creature. We couldn't see the head. It just stood there. We could see the massive muscles, most in rippling detail, shiny black fur standing with intelligence, if you can understand that term. We sped up, all the while screaming at each other, scared to death. A mile down the road, my left rear tire blew out. I drove seven miles to the first house with a light and called my father to come out and help us. While at this home, we talked with a few of the people that were there. They were having a party. We were told a couple of stories about a missing hunter, animals found gutted or with their heads missing, a lot of strange screams in the night. First, I must say beyond a shadow of any doubt that this was no hoax. The costume alone would have cost thousands and thousands of dollars to create. Secondly, the people that live in the area are extremely poor. As a matter of fact, the home that we drove up to after the tire blew out had light seeping through the cracks in the siding of the house while it sat on cinder blocks. Very poor people. After my tire blew and we drove to the first house with a light to call my father for help, the people in the house were having a party. They told us that it was common to hear strange screams, strange sounds, and missing pets. 
The area around this siding is flat and swampy. On to the next story. Near New Market in Madison County in Alabama, I was walking home from fishing, taking a different trail. As I got about two-thirds up the hill, I had the hair on my neck stand up and a feeling like I was being watched. This was around 5 p.m. I just casually kept walking till I got home, always checking my back. It happened again within a week, maybe a few days. I did not smell anything because I had been fishing or no smell anyways. It wasn't too long afterward. I was checking on the clouds of a thunderstorm when lightning struck close to the trailer. By this, I mean, I had my head out the door. I heard a yell about 70 yards away behind the trailer. It didn't sound like a cow, but I checked anyway. No cows had been in the area for at least six months. The scream was high-pitched without coming down a lot at the end. With my wife being there, I just closed the door and didn't say anything. I would say the following. Sunday afternoon, my wife went to church at 6 p.m. and I stayed home to watch TV. About 45 minutes later, I was lying on the couch watching TV when something had blacked out my window at the far end of my trailer. The window was one foot wide and three feet tall. I'd raised up to look out my picture window above the couch and it turned the corner and walked around the steps at the back door. It was looking off into the woods and as it kept walking, it looked at the ground. Understand this though, I had clear plastic on my windows to keep the heat in from winter. Hadn't taken it down yet. When I got to the windows, I had already laid back down on the couch, looking up and lay still. It looked down at me and kept walking, hopefully. I laid there for about as long as I could stand, maybe a minute. Then I got off the couch by sliding onto the floor, went and got my gun, walked back into the living room and waited a minute. Then went outside, making all the noise I could. I checked the back of the trailer, nothing there. Details of Bigfoot is as follows. He was about seven feet, maybe seven foot three. Solid black, no white or brown that I could see. Remember the plastic? His head was more rounded and not cone-shaped. I could not see the color of his eyes or anything like that. He was broad-shouldered and thinner around the waist than what you would normally see in the pictures. And he walked more upright, not hunched over like a gorilla. His hands hung around his thighs. The next morning, at around 10 a.m., I got up from bed as I worked second shift then. My wife told me a friend of mine had come down to see me. I asked, what did he want? She said she only saw him as the top of his head went across the kitchen window. We had to set the trailer on four blocks high and three on the other end, which meant you could not see anyone walking in front of the trailer not out of the kitchen window anyway. I told her my friend was six foot four and with a hat on, you could not see him the way she had told me. We lived on rocky ground, but I had one dusty dirt spot at the end of the trailer. Hoping he had walked in it, I checked in the middle was a footprint. It was about 12 and a half inches long and three and a half to four inches wide at the heel. Being dusty, it was only about a quarter inch deep. There were only three toes, which I did not understand at the time. I told some friends at work, and one came to see it. The following Friday or Saturday night, he and a friend of his came over, no drinking, sorry, and I told them the whole story. My friend was not hard to convince, but his friend started talking big, so I let them go outside, joking around to see how brave he was when he when we heard two dogs about medium to small size started barking and chasing something on the other ridge behind my trailer, which was not far at all, maybe 200 yards. They chased it into a small valley about 50 yards south of us. When one dog quit barking, the other gave one more, but then it was quiet. Stunned, we looked at each other, and Bigfoot started running back toward us. It stopped about 80 yards from us and started to hit a tree with something that sounded like a branch, about 4 to 5 inches thick. Then it ran closer, about 40 yards, and done the same thing again. By this time, all of our bravery was gone. I went back in the trailer and got my gun, came back out and asked if anything had happened. The brave guy thought he might have seen something in the shadows south of us. Light was on, of course. Then they took the gun away from me, and I didn't mind, thinking I had a way of escape. But we heard nothing else. My nearest neighbor is about 250 yards away, my mother-in-law. No one else for at least a mile. 
No reason to mess around with us that I could even think of. That was the last I have ever seen or heard of him. On to the next story. This happened in Oroville in Dallas County in Alabama. On a hot but clear afternoon, I was driving home on Country Road 21, about one mile up from my home, when up ahead I saw this dark figures approaching the side of the road. They were standing there in close proximity to each other, and as I neared them, all the while slowing down my speed, I could see three distinct and different sized figure. I've lived in the country all my life. I grew up playing and hiking the whole countryside, and I knew the area around my home real well. I've always loved watching animals in the woods, but I did not know what to make of these creatures. As I neared them, they appeared to be of various heights, about two feet or more, three feet and maybe five feet or more, and they all had brown, black, thick-looking shaggy hair all over. I could not see any facial features, but their arms were long for their bodies. They appeared to hesitate, as though they couldn't decide what to do as I approached them in my car. All of a sudden, they ran across the road in front of me and vanished into the thick bushes and trees on the other side of the road. They did not stoop over, but ran upright and with swiftness. I was stunned. They were no animals I had ever encountered before. I started to slow down and get out of my car, but all of a sudden it hit me. I've seen something that can't be explained, other than these creatures are not normal creatures. I was spooked, and the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I quickly gassed the car and sped home, and told my encounters with these creatures to my husband and son. I will never forget this. I know what I saw, and it will always be with me. I was driving alone. It was around 2 p.m. on a clear summer afternoon. The creatures crossed the road, coming out of a large wooded area, and into another wooded area. There was not much traffic on this road. There is a small creek nearby where they cross. There is an old historic wooden church nearby too. I hope you enjoyed those encounters. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. I post new content every single day. So be sure to hit that notification bell and you'll be notified exactly when that new content arrives on my channel. Again, thank you so much, and until next time, bye!